Okay, we're going to talk about uh, next section in chemistry. The next chapter in chemistry is 10, chapter 10. We're going to talk about the mole. This is what all this chapter is about. We're going to be working back and forth with what the mole is. So this first section, 10.1, we're going to be introducing what the mole is. And it's not that little dark thing on your skin. It's not the thing that digs in your lawn, that little rodent that digs in your lawn. We're going to get through these here. We're going to talk about the mole. We're going to talk about Avogadro's number. We're going to use the mole to convert between moles and representative particles. So the mole is very important here. And we use the mole to count atoms, molecules, ions, formula units. So we're going to show you how we do that here in the next few slides. So we, chemists need a method to count things, count atoms, molecules, and formula units of substances. They, come up, they came up with the mole. The mole is the SI unit used to measure the amount of a substance. It's this huge number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay, that's dead to by the mole is defined as um, 12 grams of pure carbon 12. That's the carbon that has six protons and six neutrons. There's, if you have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of those atoms together, they'll weigh exactly 12 grams. Okay, so that grams thing comes important on the next section. We're not gonna talk too much about it now. They call it Avogadro's number. It was developed by a scientist early in the 1900s, who chemist in the early 1900s who came up with this number, and we'll see why it's so important um, in the next section of uh, going from Avogadro's number to grams is where we really want to this this idea of going from figure out how many grams is involved in a chemical reaction. We need to use moles for that and Avogadro's number. Okay, but in this section, we're just going to use it convert between moles and number of particles, right? The moles to particles, we're going to use conversion factor. Okay, so when we're ever using the conversion factor, whatever you're converting to, that goes on top of the conversion factor. So we have particles on top here. We have one mole on the bottom. So 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles, that's how many things are in one mole. The particles can be atoms. They can be... Uh, molecules they can be a formula unit or it can be anything we want it can be if you but in chemistry we mostly talk about atoms and formula units okay so a little example here of how to find if you have 3.5 moles of sucrose how do you find how many molecules are in there okay so we have to use the conversion factor in Avogadro's number so you set it up like this where you have 3.5 moles of of sucrose okay the conversion factor where the moles go on the bottom because that's what we're getting rid of so the moles cancel out we have unit cancellation is very big in chemistry and from now on we're going to be wanting to use that unit cancellation to make sure your conversion factors are set up correctly. You want to end up with molecules, so it's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules goes on top. We multiply the numbers together and we get 2.11 times 10 to the 24th molecules of sugar. Okay, to go the other way, the particles to moles, we inverse of Avogadro's number conversion factors. So we, we want to end up with moles, right? We have number of particles and we want to end up with moles. So we put the thing we want to get rid of, we want to change from particles to moles. We put that particles part on the bottom, the moles goes on the top. Okay, so we work it back the other way. Now the molecules cancel out, we end up with moles. And of course, since we use the same numbers, it's going to end up at 3.5 moles of sucrose. Okay, so that was pretty short, so I'm going to do a little examples of that. But a little checkpoint here, what does the mole measure? Okay, so it measures the amount of a substance. Which conversion factor is the right one here? Okay, so we want to go, we want to go determine the number of moles of a substance. So we want to end up with moles when we know the number of particles. So the thing we want to end up with, that goes on top of our conversion factor. So the only conversion factors we used here were A and B. So which one has the moles on top? Okay, so that was B. Okay, so I'm going to go through some more examples here to so get you guys, help you guys a little more on this. And I made this little um, notebook thing here. And so I want to convert 
small is the number of particles okay so the small thing is to explain a little more is like the same way a, a dozen is a, a, a mole is a huge number right but it's the same concept as a dozen things okay if I have a dozen pencils I have a dozen erasers I have a dozen dollars I have 12 of those things right if I have a dozen calculators whatever it is that's I have 12 of those things they can all be different sizes different shapes different weights doesn't matter I have 12 of them that's what a dozen means okay so if I have five dozen roses how many roses do I have all together okay so we're using our conversion factor part we got five dozen roses and our conversion factor we want to get rid of the dozen right so one dozen goes on the bottom one dozen roses equals how many how many are in dozen well we what we want to end up with is 12 roses right so what cancels out the dozen roses cancel out and then you go 5 times 12 and you get 60 roses okay so we're gonna do the same kind of thing down here with moles of H2O how many molecules would we have Okay, so we're going to set it up, 5 moles, and we can abbreviate moles, moles MOL, of H2O. And one mole has how many things in it? Well, it doesn't matter if they're atoms, molecules, or whatever. They're all going to have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. In this case, it's molecules. Okay, so... How do we get that? What do we get for that number? Then we have to use a little calculator magic here. Clear that, clear that. So we do 6.02 Avogadro's number, 23rd times 5. Or I could have done it the other way, but either way I get the same answer. So I get it a little over 3, and then notice that the exponent here is, is went up to 24. Okay, so this equals about... 3.0 times 10 to the 24th molecules of H2O. Okay. 4.5 moles of carbon. How many atoms is that? We set up our conversions the same way. So, what is our con? We have 4.5 moles of carbon. We want to get rid of the moles and we want to end up with atoms. We put atoms on top and we put moles on the bottom. One mole has how many atoms? Well, it's Avogadro's number again. Okay, so calculator magic time again. 4.5 times 6.02 second e to the 23rd. So I get 2.7 this time, times 10 to the 24th. 2.7 times 10 to the 24th atoms. Okay, that's what I want to get. That's how many there are. So choose a random number here, the 1.23 moles. And we use smaller numbers of moles most of the time in chemistry. It's not unusual to have a number of moles less than one. Okay, so how do we do this? Same exact way. 0.123 moles. And I'm just going to leave out the H2SO4. One mole on the bottom, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Molecules, whatever we want to end up with, right? Molecules in this case. Okay, so calculator time again. 0.123 times 6.02 e to the 22nd, 23rd I meant, and we get an answer is 7.4 to the 22nd, 7.4 times 10 to the 22nd, okay, so that makes sense, this is less than a mole, so that this, I think I wrote this wrong, should be 23rd of course, and so we get that, seems like a reasonable answer, okay, so what about going the other way we convert particles to moles we have a huge number of part out of these atoms how many moles is that okay so we have uh, 
times 10 to the 23rd, we want to convert. Where do we want to end up with? In this case, we want to end up with moles. So we put the moles on top, and we put our the how many particles are in a mole, Avogadro's number again. Okay, so in this case, we're going to do a division. We're going to divide with these two numbers, these two big numbers together. 12.04. Point oh four second e to the twenty third divided by six point oh two second e to the twenty third. Okay, so it comes out two. I made it come out two. I knew it was gonna come out two. So it equals two moles of carbon. Okay, so random number here. How do we do this? This is going to be five point eight nine times ten to the twenty fourth molecules and we want to figure out how many moles we have so what's going to go on top one mole is going to go on top how many things are in one mole 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd 23rd molecules in this case so the molecules cancel out and we do another division here to get to get the moles 5.89 second e to the 24th divided by Avogadro's number second e to the 23rd oops screwed up uh, what did I do oh yeah I should have had times there well division Okay, that looks right. Okay, so I got it, finally got it right. So about 7.8, and that's not unusual to have like a normal number of moles, right? We don't have a huge number of moles. And in fact, we usually have, you know, between one and 10 is normal or even less than one. So this is about, this was about 9.8 moles of water. Okay, so it's not unusual to have a small number of moles. In fact, it'd be unusual if you had more than 20 moles of something. Or if you had, definitely if you had like a hundred or more than 100, you've probably done something wrong with your exponents, okay? So normally our moles are less than 10, often less than one. And if you get more than that, you should check your calculations. So this time, same kind of thing again, 4.56 times 10 to the 22nd. What are we going to put on the top? What are we going to put on the bottom? Okay, so we need to convert two moles. So what we're converting to goes on top. So one mole goes on top. How many things are in one mole? Avogadro's number once again. Okay, so how many moles did we end up with? Calculator time, 1.56. E, and this time it's only to the 22nd, divided by 6.02, second E to the 23rd. Okay, so we ended up with less than one mole. And like I said, that's not unusual to do that. Okay, so this is quite a bit less than one mole. This is like 0 0.76, 0 0.076, 0.0. 7.6 moles and that's not unusual either to run to have that okay so I hope that helps with your mole to atoms moles to things moles to particles calculation your particles to moles calculation that was what we wanted to get across in this lesson so answer the questions on the form I'll see you in class tomorrow